Hello and welcome to today's European SharePoint Office 365 and Azure Community Webinar. My name is Shane and I'm delighted to be joined by Stefano Tempesta, CTO, Microsoft Regional Director and MVP at Connecting Software Australia, who will be talking to you today about virtual eye vision with HoloLens. Remember to join the conversation about today's webinar on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at EuropeanSP and our hashtag is ESPC20. Don't forget to check out the Resource Centre. This is updated daily with the latest blogs, ebooks, webinars, and how to videos. Simply visit SharePointEurope.com and click the content link at the top. After the webinar, we will have a questions and answers session. Type any questions you have in the questions window. Questions will be selected and answered at the end of the presentation. This webinar will be recorded and added to the Resource Centre where you'll be notified by email when it is available. And now I'm going to pass you over to our webinar presenter, Stefano Tempesta. Hello, Stefano. Hi, Stefano, can you hear me? Hi, Shane. Yes, I can hear you indeed, and thanks for the introduction. Welcome, everybody. And uh, thanks for taking the time uh, to be here today and uh, share some experience together. This is an experience uh, that I have done uh, some time ago, just playing a little bit with HoloLens in the context of a, a specific application. Application that has been used uh, by the uh, people that have uh, some challenges with sight, the visually impaired, that are getting benefit from technology like HoloLens and Azure Cognitive Services to have a virtual vision. So I want to draw your attention for a, a minute or two on the next video. There is no sound on it. There are some subtitles, so I'm going to speak over it. And uh, you can see where this technology has been applied and how it puts together the power of Azure Cognitive Services, HoloLens, Artificial Intelligence, Augmented Reality to assist those in need. So this is an experience at Caltech, the University of Technology of California. That's uh, actually, if you think, uh, if uh, exactly the same university of uh, Sheldon Cooper in the Big Bang Theory, right? Now, the university decided to put together the power of HoloLens, that you can see uh, being used here, as service of those that don't have uh, the possibility to see as we normally do. Imagine you are in a world where all the objects around you have voices. When you first walk into a new space, you can simply have the objects call themselves out one at a time from left to right. Floor lamp, laptop, picture. And then picture. you can switch to spotlight mode, for example. And that is computer voice, computer synthesized voice that describes the object. There is a laptop, there is a lamp, there is a desk, object recognition. And not just that, navigation starter, follow me, follow me. See, those are actual instructions given to the blind wearing uh, the device to be able to move around, augmented reality to scan the environment and describe the environment in uh, real world, so in plain English. very gratifying to see that the blind person could come to the lab, put on our device, and make their way through the building without further assistance. The sky's the limit for what kind of functionalities you want to build into a device like that, because it's essentially a software problem. We'd like to see this device used and offered at the entrance of large spaces, more or less the way you would adopt an audio guide when you walk into a museum. Put your headphones in and off you go. All right, so that is the quick experience. 
And in this session, I want to dive into the technology that have enabled this experience, starting with the device, starting with HoloLens. HoloLens second edition of version number two is a completely unfeathered device, meaning that it doesn't rely on, uh, a, on being connected to a laptop or a workstation or a mobile device, a smartphone. It, it is a computer on its own. It has cameras for uh, uh, light and infrared, speakers, microphones, uh, and sensors for tracking head movement, eye tracking, and um, you know, a few other sensors for uh, capturing uh, uh, movements uh, in general. As said, it is a computer on its own. It runs uh, a Qualcomm CPU as a specialized holographic processing unit, memory, storage, connectivity, and so on. Also, it's not the lightweight, let's put it that way, it, at a bit more than half a kilo, is definitely not a device that you wanna wear uh, all the day, and also it wouldn't last all the day from a battery perspective, Two hours is the average time when being used extensively for this kind of activity. But for short uh, engagement, for short activities, it perfectly fits the purpose. And uh, it comes also with uh, a software that is uh, part of the uh, device itself, a special Windows edition, a Windows operating system for holographic devices, Edge browser. Uh, you may also know that there are a few apps uh, in uh, Microsoft Dynamics 365 that benefit of uh, augmented reality, remote assist and guide to enable uh, a technician, a field technician, uh, to connect uh, with uh, um, with uh, um, a subject matter expert uh, uh, back in the office and get uh, remote assistance. Uh, or guides uh, about uh, uh, machineries that they are uh, uh, servicing. But that's completely another story. Maybe it will be a topic for another session in the future. And it also has uh, Cortana, which is uh, the, um, the, the voice uh, synthesis that I will show later today. Now, the very simple and high level architecture of an application that runs on HoloLens uh, it has a different components. The holographic part itself, which is an app for the runs inside HoloLens. There is an SDK. I'll send you, I'll share some, uh, um, some references at the end if you are intrigued to, to getting started working on HoloLens. Uh, but also there is a component of uh, interaction with uh, different other channels, uh, voice commands, hand gesture, eye tracking, and a lot of other capabilities that the Azure Cognitive Services provide. So at the end, uh, we want to put everything together and uh, have the AR, the Augmented Reality Capability of HoloLens, together with uh, the Cognitive Services, with the Artificial Intelligence part of it. And Cognitive Services is a lot of, of services. There is a services for a computer vision, speech synthesis, language analysis, uh, knowledge base. Uh, there is uh, so much available in, uh, in, uh, uh, in cognitive services uh, offered in the Azure cloud uh, that you can access all these services uh, without being uh, an expert uh, data scientist. No machine learning expertise required. It's a purely endpoint, it's a REST API that you can consume in the cloud and potentially even at the edge running inside containers. Now, I would love to speak about all the cognitive services that are available, but it will take probably a full day. So I'm going to focus on some of them. Vision. Vision has a capability to analyze images, videos, handwriting, forms, uh, and a lot of faces and a lot of other things. I'm going to focus on face indeed because the face api is the api that has been used by this uh, technology by the vision the virtual ai 
uh, in connection with HoloLens for detecting faces of people and even identifying them. So the, how the API works basically is a two aspects of it. One is the detection inside a picture. It detects a rectangle where the face uh, is. And uh, the response is a JSON message. I said, this is a REST API. So you send the image as a stream to, this, uh, to the endpoint in Azure. And then you get back a JSON message that contains the different attributes, including the rectangle where the face has been identified inside the image. There are several attributes also that are um, detected, um, whether a person is a male or a female, um, the expression, the, the color, the eyes, hair, whether uh, he or she is wearing uh, uh, glasses, uh, smiling, uh, and, uh, and also uh, emotions. Op uh, part number one, detection. And then there is a second part, which is identification. Assuming that you have uh, uploaded a collection of pictures of people, friends, family, colleagues, the API is able to detect whether um, who is that person, whether that face matches one of the existing uh, profile, face profile, profile faces inside this uh, preloaded database. And then it can be used to describe that person. So uh, think of the application as a, a person that cannot see. Uh, when using the device, the, uh, it will recognize that, that there is a person, first of all. If that person has not been identified, it will just describe it. If it is uh, identified, it will say, hey, you met Mary. Hey, you met uh, Jason, and so on. You know, So it gives you a little bit of a, a better description on the environment around you. So let me show you this in action, actually, actually how, how that works. I have a very simple application that I, I, I shared the open source code on my GitHub repository. And uh, it's a collection of different services on, uh, on, uh, Azure, on Azure Cognitive Services. But I will particularly focus on the Face API. So I have preloaded uh, some stock images of some celebrities that you can see on screen. And then uh, I can do face uh, detection. In the first picture, there is a one face only. So I'm going to click on it. You see face, uh, um, the picture has been selected. And then scroll down here, the, the, um, the rectangle of the face has been identified in coordinates uh, relative to the picture itself. And then a number of attributes, gender, age, smile so is a percentage of a likelihood that the smile has been recognized whether it's wearing glasses mustache beard and sideburns good on air nothing has been detected and then some uh, some emotions as well okay so this is looks like a bit more neutral these are all numbers between zero and one zero meaning no detection at all one 100 percent uh, the API is also able to recognize multiple faces inside an image. So in this case of this uh, couple, I can select here in, in a moment. Here we go. We have a face number one, face number two, and then you can see face number two is a female, face number one is a male, and they all look very happy. All right. So now this uh, works on stock images, but obviously I can upload uh, another image or I can um, uh, take a, a picture uh, in real time. Uh, now, I don't know if that's gonna work. We can give it a try. Here we go, that's me. So let's do a, a, an upset face. How about that? Okay, sorry for the face. Upload it and uh, let's see what happens. Here we go, face detected, male 43, ah, thank you. 
uh, no glasses, uh, uh, and you can see oh, it came out a bit of a happiness, or a bit of anger, uh, and a bit of disgust. Uh, I'm in a mix of emotions today. You know that that's the way it works. Now that it, this is the face detection. The second part is the identification. So taking some of the stock images, uh, I can just upload these, uh, and this is. Uh, uh, now, obviously, we know that this Prince Harry, but uh, we want to identify where this face here, so let me pick this one again, this face here is in any of the three stock images that uh, I have uh, pre-uploaded, and I have trained the, 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 the service to recognize in, in among these people in this group. So I upload this. When I upload, it does the full detection, obviously. So uh, same attributes uh, that has been detected before. But now I want to do a match. So when I do find a match, it's going to look into the three pictures here and bam. This one highlighted in red is where the face has been recognized. And you know, if you pick another one here, so we can pick no one here, but I have uh, some other stock images. So you have this lovely lady here one more time. I upload. Obviously, we know that uh, is here. Find a match, and then it will uh, identify Taylor Swift in the first image. How does it do that? Well, it does it because I have preloaded the three images. I have classified them. So I, I say that this is Taylor, this is Prince Harry, Meghan, uh, who is this lady? Jennifer Aniston and so on. Okay, so you got the idea the way it works. So you can personalize the API the way you want. And then once you send the picture, it will automatically recognize, detect the face. And if there is a database of people that have been preloaded, also identify or find a match. Now, when finding a match, you get a list of candidates, especially if there are people that look alike. So, so you may go for uh, the, the candidate with the highest score. Um, and the score is expressed, again, with a number between zero and one, a confidence score. So I will tell you when this person has been uh, uh, matched and the level of confidence for the match itself. Okay, uh, before we progress, uh, so this is uh, the first part uh, of the of the of the API, the, um, the face detection. So the application recognize uh, people and then describe. Uh, actually, I, I, let me show you the description because uh, that is a, a, an interesting part of it. So there is a, a second part of, of the API which I didn't show you, which is because is in another. Uh, in another solution that I have, so hold on a second, which has been used for this sort of uh, uh, services. So hold on a second, and I'm on, on, I'm on another screen. I'm opening uh, my Visual Studio solution. And uh, yes, what I want to show you is that the API can do also another thing, not only describe as a JSON object, so purely with this numeric information, but it can also describe a person or a or object inside an image. So not just people. It's opening in a moment. So forget this context. This is now in a chatbot. Uh, what, what I want to show you is, uh, this so for example i open this and i take a picture of something okay this is a car i'm going to open this upload and you can see the analysis of this image will tell you first of all as identify the brand a generic category transportation car and there is a caption a yellow car parked on a road so think this application in the context of what we have seen, the, the virtual eye. So what will describe, what will happen is uh, that the picture is taken, is sent to this API. The API will return a caption, which is a plain English text, and this will be then synthesized as a voice command, 
or the voice uh, expression and then spoken to to the person using the device i'll mention in a moment about uh, uh, this uh, voice synthesis and then obviously there are a few other tags and so on i have no idea why this is classified as a fiat 500 this is uh, a Volkswagen beetle probably looks like a bit to the 500 but it's definitely not now another thing that this can do this api is also recognize vips now i have these stock images here with a few vips in here um but if i pick one that i have not classified so i am not uploaded in the stock images in my database the api is still able to recognize so upload this and you can see it will read Barack Obama smiling in front of a flag. And that's, you know, unbelievable if you think about it. So the, the, this picture has been uh, described in plain English, just like that. Super powerful, right? And uh, now a few VIPs, a few celebrities are, uh, can be identified. I haven't tested with everybody. I think Jennifer Aniston is one of those that is uh, being recognized. Let me double check. Yes, she is. Okay. So a bit of the description of what she's doing. Um, but obviously, you know, uh, with uh, normal people, your friends, your colleagues, families, and so on, then you will have to train the model. So you will have to upload all the images and give them a name. And then the API will be able to detect also your family, your friends, and whoever other picture you have uploaded and return the name of that person. Okay. Uh, so any questions around this uh, face detection, uh, face identification so far around this API? Let me go and check in the chat. So feel free to ask questions in the chat anytime. Otherwise, I will carry on and show the second part of this experience, which is speech. This is another cognitive services. And in this case, the focus is on text to speech. So the possibility to convert a text, so text that has been extracted by the previous API that describes a face, describe object, and synthesize this as a voice. Very, very natural voice. So that it can be um, used in this uh, uh, virtual eye, uh, um, virtual eyes uh, application through the, um, through the speakers and, and uh, the, the virtually and visually impaired people can uh, have a description on the environment of people around them, um, completely synthesized by this uh, text-to-speech API. Now, the way it works, and uh, again, I have um, I have the capability uh, here that I can show you. Now, the only thing is that I don't think you guys can get uh, audio so we will not be able probably to hold on a second this is opening we'll not be able to to test it but i can show you in action it's opening here and, and, and maybe i can show you also a, a glimpse of the source code just to show you how easy is to program it okay so i'm going to my cognitive services demos which is opening in a moment and i go into speech okay and then you can see i can type something hello world today is a beautiful day okay and then i can choose a voice now there are over 40 voices available so i had just selected a few in this demo and you can choose also uh, nuances of a language uh, or accent uh, australian english british english american english and so on 
you can choose uh, the gender whether you want a male or a female voice and also the speed and pitch high pitch is more of a, a child voice or like the chip monkeys if you go for a very very high pitch and speed obviously is a speed of a, of a pronunciation now I'm gonna play I'm not sure that you can hear it because I don't know if the audio goes through hello world today is a beautiful day so that was an Australian female voice saying hello world today is a very beautiful is a beautiful day and uh, it was very natural. I don't know if you heard that, but it was very, very natural voice. And uh, the way you can do that, basically, I'm going to show you the source code. I have a solution here in, that is, uh, I said, it's open source, so you can play the way you want. Okay, here is that we have this is a text to speech right yes there it is so what what you need first of all is a new get package this is a, a c sharp solution so uh, there is a, a, a an sdk for net which you can see here microsoft.cognitiveservices.speech which uh, give you access to a number of apis and uh, specifically there is this uh, speak i think where you, you speak a, a, a text and this is all you need to do you create an instance of the speech synthesizer and then speak the specific text asynchronously all these cognitive services are rest api that you invoke asynchronously so you will always use the async away pattern and that's all you need to do just create a speech synthesizer and then read this text. This will result. This will return. Uh, as a, this will return a, a result of the speech, which is in this case is not even used because it is speaking to the speaker of your computer. Uh, an alternative is that you can speak to a file. In that case, uh, you will. Uh, save to a file name or you can speak to a stream in that case you will use the result to save it as an audio data stream okay so there are three different flavors of how you can use this speaker speak to the speaker of your uh, predefined speak of your computer speak to a file so it will save as a wav file or speak to a stream and will save to a stream in memory and um, there is a flavor also a variant of this uh, speak uh, text async which is basically using an ssml which is a speech synthesis markup language the speak ssml instead of the speak text basically get an ssml text which is an xml dialect optimized for speech synthesis i'm going to talk about it in a moment but just for you to understand that there are two ways of getting uh, the the speaking synthesis done uh, through normal text or through ssml which is an xml um, um, language i mean it's not a language but is a uh, more of a, a description of the text which uh, provides uh, different intonation different voices uh, different uh, speed uh, some poses inside the one uh, sentence or in, inside one uh, text uh, alone so said that quick recap of this api so speak to file speaker or memory stream uh, you can also do a very long si speak um, synthesis over 10 minutes which means that you can use it also for you know, be reading very very long text and synthesize this in voice very very natural so it can be used for reading some articles some uh, not very long text over 45 languages 
a different uh, type of voice, uh, male and female, uh, different accent. Uh, there is an S SDK for uh, different programming languages, so you can build application in C Sharp, uh, in Java, JavaScript, and so on. And then there is uh, support for uh, speech synthesis markup language. This is uh, oops, too, too early. This is uh, a description using an XML type uh, syntax of uh, text that you want to synthesize so that it provides a more natural expression, different voice, uh, different speed, uh, different intonation, uh, and so on. Okay, so obviously you need to get a bit more familiar with how SS SSML works to make the best out of it. All right, uh, we are actually nearly at the end. Uh, any questions around the speech uh, synthesis? Otherwise, uh, I have another very short video and um, I will speak over it again because uh, there is uh, no audio that you can uh, receive through. And this is an experience that Microsoft has presented at the last Ignite conference, if I know wrong, where this application has taken a, even a step further. Using HoloLens is great, but HoloLens has the challenge of uh, being limited in terms of uh, battery and uh, weight is heavy. So the idea is uh, let's bring this uh, one level further because uh, using the augmented reality capability for describing the environment is great, but at the end, 90% of what we need is mostly done through a normal a webcam and a pair of speakers. So putting this in a smaller lightweight device helped to get the portability of this solution mainstream. And this was presented by Sadio Nadella at one of the recent worldwide events. And what, what Nadella now is saying that he is introducing uh, one of the developers and testers of this application, a person who works at Microsoft, has been a, a center of this development, of this solution, and uh, he's a blind person. He's based in London, and uh, he decided to use technology to make life better for the blind. I joined Microsoft 10 years ago as a software engineer. I love making things which improve people's lives. And one of the things I've always dreamt of since I was at university was this idea of something that could tell you at any moment what's going on around you. I think it's a man jumping in the air doing a trick on a skateboard. I teamed up with like-minded engineers to make an app which lets you know who and what is around you. It's based on top of the Microsoft Intelligence APIs, which makes it so much easier to make this kind of thing. The app runs on smartphones, but also on the pivot head smart glasses. When you're talking to a bigger group, sometimes you can talk and talk and there's no response and you think, is everyone listening really well or are they half asleep? And you never know. I see two faces, 40 year old man with a beard looking surprised, 20 year old woman looking happy. The app can describe the general age and gender of people around me and what their emotions are, which is incredible. One of the things that's most useful about the app is the ability to read out text. Hello, good afternoon. Menu. Thank you. I can use the app on my phone to take a picture of the menu. And it's going to guide me on how to take that correct photo. Move camera to the bottom right and away from the document. And then it'll recognize the text. Read me the headings. I see appetizers, salads, paninis, pizzas, pastas. Hi. Years ago, this was science fiction. I never thought it would be something that you could actually do. But artificial intelligence is improving at an ever faster rate. And I'm really excited to see where we can take this. As engineers, we're always standing on the shoulders of giants, 
building on top of what went before. And in this case, we've taken years of research on Microsoft's research to pull this off. I think it's a young girl throwing an orange frisbee in the park. For me, it's about taking that far off dream and building it one step at a time. I think this is just the beginning. All right. Okay. So I hope you appreciate uh, how technology is helping people getting uh, better along with their life. This was uh, an experience that I wanted to share. Start with HoloLens, uh, making great use of uh, cognitive services and evolving more and more into uh, into an application and uh, so apps and a solution that con is involves also hardware that um, can really uh, you know make an impact and change people's life so hope you get inspired by this technology uh, some references that you can see on screen get started with azure cognitive services uh, specifically face recognition text to speech but there is so much more in cognitive services if you've never done cognitive services before uh, i invite you to just search for uh, azure cognitive services in the browser and uh, it will end up um, somewhere here where you can see all the services that are available decision language speech and vision Web search is moving away from the services and going into Bing. So, but so these are the ones that I, uh, are more powerful, that are, at least that uh, are more relevant. So, computer vision, face, text to speech, speech to text, real time translation. So, there is so much that can be done by using these services. They are all exposed as API. REST API, so you're not constrained to a specific programming language. There are some SDK for some programming language, but being a REST API, you're really free to use any language you want. And they all run in Azure, so they are pre-trained services with some machine learning behind, but you don't need to be a data scientist to use, you just need to be able to consume a REST API. To get started, just Click the button and you can try click uh, cognitive services for free or otherwise just azure.com slash free and uh, you have the possibility to create a 12 month uh, free service of Azure where you can then access these cognitive services and obviously many more in the Azure cloud itself. Okay, so that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question, uh, feel free to type now in the chat or get in touch with me over Twitter, Twitter LinkedIn. Happy to follow up uh, and uh, share the source code. You, you will find me on um, my GitHub repo anyway. And uh, hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for great presentation Stefano yes now we will start the questions and answers part and should you wish to ask a question please type it into the question window now and uh, we don't seem to have any questions in Stefano so I think that's been great it seems everything is really clear and everybody's understanding everything so we can leave it at that no that's great yes so one of the typical questions that I always get uh, I already answered before is uh, uh, can you code this API in any programming language or you're limited to a specific language? And as I said, this is a REST API, so you can really do it in any programming language. So JavaScript, Node.js, uh, Java, uh, Golang, uh, .NET. I have shared my source code on GitHub using .NET because that's the programming language that I prefer to use, so in C Sharp, I mean. But uh, obviously, the API it can be consumed in any other programming language. And, uh, and another question that I typically get when presenting cognitive services is how much they cost. And uh, they cost nothing. They are free to use. There are two tiers, OK, Le to be honest. There is a free tier, and there is a, 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 a paid tier. The free tier allows you to do something like uh, 
uh, a call per second uh, or something no something basic but enough for testing purposes i mean you don't know you don't do more than one image analysis per second right so that will be enough for testing purposes for most of the normal applications but if you are obviously scaling your solution to very uh, large volume of users, thousand and thousand, then you need to go for the paid version. But when I say paid version, we are really talking of uh, a few dollars for millions of transactions. So it's incredibly cheap to run, completely serverless. You don't need to provision any infrastructure in the cloud, no virtual machines, no containers. You just create uh, the service in Azure and it's ready to use. Brilliant. Thank you, Stefano. Okay, Stefano, on behalf of the ES ESPC community, thank you for taking the time today to complete this webinar. We really appreciate it. Thank you all. Have a good day. Thank you. Okay, everybody, that is it for today's webinar. A big thank you again to Stefano Tempesta. Uh, as this is the end of today's webinar, you can see all upcoming webinars and previous webinars at the Resource Centre. Simply visit SharePointEurope.com and click on the Resource Center link. Thank you all for joining us today. Take care and goodbye.